That's for the first interference minimum. What about additional minima? What about additional nodes at further angles? Well, the way we can do that is we'll just divide this up into succeeding even numbers of, even, uh, of equal pieces. So 2, 4, 6, and so on. So the first interference maximum occurs where there's 2, the second where there's 4, the third where there's 6, and the nth where there are 2n segments here. So let's divide this up into 2n segments and figure out what the angle is going to be for the node. So I've imagined now four pieces. And again, the condition is that the difference between the phase or the uh, travel distance from one end of the segment to the other end of the segment has to be lambda over 2. This one has to be lambda over 2 ahead of this, so that this interferes with this, interferes with this, interferes with this. And then you'll have total destructive interference, total cancellation. The length of the hypotenuse of this triangle is d over 2n, where n is the number of the, uh, of the node, the number of the minimum. So now we have sine theta equals lambda over 2 over d over 2n. So now we have sine theta equals lambda over 2 over d over 2n. And again, I should draw the triangle to show exactly what I mean. So the opposite side, the opposite side is lambda over 2. That angle is theta. And the dimension, the, this, the length of the hypotenuse is d over 2n. So we have this. Uh, this simplifies rather readily. to sine theta equals n lambda over d. So we will get the nth minimum, or the nth node, when uh, the sine theta is n times lambda over d. Now let's see what this tells us. For the first case, so for the first node, That's n equals 1. Sine theta equals lambda over d. Well, we know the sine theta has to be between negative 1 and 1. Uh, it can't go higher than that. If the sine theta is negative 1, that means that um, theta is ni negative 90 degrees. If it's positive 1, then theta is positive 90 degrees. So if this ratio is bigger than that. If lambda is bigger than d, in other words, if the slit width is less than one wavelength, we won't have any nodes. What that acts like is like the single wavelet can't, uh, the wavelets can't interfere, and you essentially, the, uh, when the slit is that narrow, that it's less than one wavelength, or one wavelength or less, then it essentially acts just like a point source of the wave. When the slit gets wider than one wavelength, then you can start to see you have a chance of getting interference. You, you can get a node. What about the higher node? Say n equals 2. Well, you're only going to get this when 2 lambda over d is 1 or less. For 2 lambda over d to be less than 1, then lambda has to be less than half the slit width. Uh, you're only going to get a second node when the slit width is more than two wavelengths, and so on. 